What would some famous logos look like if SpongeBob, Patrick and Larry the Lobster were the business owners of three different franchises? Hello, I'm Carl the Creative and I am obsessed with logos. Let's start with SpongeBob and give him McDonald's because he obviously knows the most about flipping burgers. Call me a freak, but I think making the yellow of the Macca's logo, SpongeBob spongy skin, makes for a good star. We'll do this by changing the bright yellow to SpongeBob's sponge yellow and giving the M SpongeBob's little holes in his skin. You know, I just realized that there's probably a few people in the world who find SpongeBob to be a horror show because they have triopophobia, which is a fear of patterns of holes. I bet their lives are pretty interesting, not gonna lie. To get SpongeBob's holes that scare 2% of people in the world, we'll grab an image of SpongeBob and create a new layer and bucket his holes that we have a layer of holes to edit with. Then we'll put the darker holes on the darker yellow. Okay, Spongebob holes are now done. I did not think I'll be saying the word hole so many times today. Anyways, next we'll get Spongebob's pants and remake them using the red of the Macca's logo and turning it brown. Spongebob wear the black belt, so we're going to grab the image of Spongebob, bucket a few of the rectangles that make his belt, then add them to our logo and duplicate that to make our Spongebob belt. Now we'll erase some of the belt that covers up our Spongebob by making it see-through and erasing the bits that overlap the sponge. Next we'll add some spongy legs to our logo, so we'll take another image of Spongebob and bucket each leg onto a new layer. That way I can combine the legs together and now we have legs but without the black outline so it matches with our logo. Now that our logo is almost complete, we just gotta do a final touch, which is to turn our word McDonald's into mixed sponges. What do you think? Does SpongeBob make a great logo? Next up we have Patrick Star. I wasn't really sure what company he should own, until I realized they would probably be appropriate if he was the owner of Starbucks. Well, considering he's a star after all. So we'll start with giving the Starbucks mermaid Patrick's dumb-witted eyes. We'll do this by getting an image of Patrick and using the cutting tool to cut the excess parts of Patrick that are surrounding the eyeballs and erasing the little bits left behind. Then we'll aim and pluck the sucker onto our logo. Now we'll fill in the eyes of our logo, so we have a face with our eyes, then we'll add Patrick's mouth doing the same thing we did earlier to get his eyes. Now 
then fill in the mouth and the nose. And we should pretty much have a full face of Patrick. For the dress of our logo, I'm going to have it have the same flower pattern that is on Patrick's pants. To do that, we'll grab another image of Patrick and put the layer on top so we have access to the pattern. Then on a new layer, we'll bucket the shapes and drag them to where we want them to be to appear on the dress. Then we'll use the cutting tool again and cut into the dress and then reverse the cutting tool so that it cuts outside of the dress. And that way it'll remove everything that's outside of the dress that's on the flower pattern layer so it all lines up perfectly onto our dress. Then we'll use the bucket tool again and change her dress to green just like Patrick's pants and now we have a pink and purple flowery dress. However, I forgot one important thing about the dress's pattern which is the darker purple borders around the flowers so I'll add them to the flowers by using the border tool to make, you guessed it, purple borders then I'll use the cutting tool trick on the dress again then fix up any pieces that aren't meant to be there. Next we'll adjust his eyebrow then colour in the sleeves of his outfit by drawing dividing lines because the logo's hair and tail are joined together. Now we'll sharpen off the sleeves to make the hair more pointy because pointy hair is more fashionable. Next up we'll be making the logo's tails. Since Patrick Star is, well, a starfish, we'll be replacing the logo's tail with his starfish fins. Arms. What exactly are they called? Whatever. Them things. To replace the tail with Patrick's arm head thing, we'll remove the detail like his eyes and mouth so it's just a regular pink fin. Then we'll shape it a bit so it's curved with our logo. Okay, so next we'll copy and paste the pink that we have so far, and then flip it so it can be on the other side of our logo. Next up was to get back our red borders. So to do that, I simply used a picture of Patrick to make sure I had the correct border thickness. Then I coloured in the border to the correct colour. I also then bucketed the dots on Patrick using a different layer so I could add his dots to our logo. Then to save time doing that again, I just copied and pasted it like before, then flipped it. I didn't want the dots to be the same as the other side, so I moved the dots around a bit and filled in the empty spaces. I then align the fin to the correct position of the logo, then use my cutting tool to cut everything that's outside of the circle to our logo, so the fins now look like they belong. I then erase the tails from behind them. I wasn't too sure what to do with Patrick's face, so I just turned it pink, then fixed up the drool and the eyebrows so it looked better. Next up was to change the colour of the hair. Because Patrick doesn't actually have any hair, I went to Google to find a time in the show where Patrick actually had hair. I'm sure there was at least one, since there's like a billion episodes of Spongebob. Eventually I found one that I actually remembered. Patrick dresses up as a girl and for some reason Patrick and Mr. Krabs fall in love with him. So I'll take the colour of the female Patrick's hair, then I'll change the logo's hair to match. 
Then I'll do a little fixing of the hair so all the pixels are yellow. The last thing to do was the crown. I wasn't too sure what to do for the crown. Maybe replace it with a different type of hat? But I like the style on the crown so I decided to change it from white to pink and red. Then I added a few of Patrick's dots on it. There we have Patrick's logo. Not gonna lie, it didn't turn out the best. Hopefully our next logo will be a bit better. Next up we have Larry the Lobster. Because Larry is into fitness, it made perfect sense to give him one of the most well-known gyms, Planet Fitness. Mostly because of the memes about how terrible Planet Fitness is. I don't know, I've never been, but yes. Larry the Lobster gets to be the owner of Planet Fitness, now to be renamed Lobster Fitness. Using Larry's large lobster fist, I wanted to replace the thumbs up with a lobster arm. I wasn't sure if I should use the real life lobster hand or use Larry's cartoon one. But I figured I wanted to keep all the logos to be cartoony so they all matched. After lining up the lobster hand, I needed to make it black and white while also looking a lot like the original logo design. It took a while but eventually I managed to make it look pretty good. I had to use all sorts of different methods to recreate the thumbs up, but I think I eventually figured it out. With Larry's arm almost gone, I kept the shiny as on his hand, then I started on removing the old hand. To do this, I got another Planet Fitness logo and rotated it and lined it up in a way where most of the arm is gone. Next up was to remove the rest of the arm, so it could be replaced with the lobster hand. It didn't matter too much if it wasn't all gone, as the rest of it would be covered up by the lobster hand. The final step is to change planet to lobster, so we have lobster fitness in our logo. Luckily I found a font that was quite similar, so we used that and then it added the rough dents and scratches to the lettering to match it with the other word. Well there you have it, Larry now has his very own gym logo. So what did you think of all these Spongebob character logos? Do you think Bikini Bottom could use them? 